Hi, I'm Mitch. Welcome to the workshop. Today I'm making a simple cross halving frame. And you could use this for either a photograph or you could put a mirror in the back of it. If planing isn't something that you're used to doing, then A is a good chance of some practice. But if you don't fancy that, just speak to your supplier and I'm sure they'll get them planed up for you. It'll be on a machine, so it might be a little bit rough, but you can always give it a sand. So I'm starting with these two pieces of pine. Uh, you can obviously start with the longer one. These are both the same thickness and they're the same width. And these just happen to be the same length. We're going to need four lengths for the frame, so I'm going to be cutting these in half. And before I get started, so I cut those roughly in half, I'm going to put a face side and face edge on all these pieces. That's roughly how we're going to lay them out. I want to have it capture the mirror in a very slight groove, so all the pieces want to be slightly less far apart than the mirror is wide, and it's a square tile, so that's fairly easy to do. Now I want to centre my tile, so let's find the centre point here. That's right. Now if I sink my mirror in to each side by about a millimetre, all the way around, that should be plenty to hold it together. So let's just mark in from those edges one millimetre. Let's pencil those in and they will be the internal side of the joints. And because it's going to be symmetrical I can stack all my pieces together and copy those off. And the way the joint goes together is one piece goes underneath the other so when I copy this joint across, I'm going to be sawing from the opposite side on two pieces. So I'm going to flip two of these over, line everything up, and then transfer those marks across. And I'm going to do it with a knife. So they'll be the inside faces of the joint. Uh, to set the outside faces, we need the thickness that the joint needs to be, which of course is the thickness of one of these pieces. So we'll take one piece out, set the square up against that knife line, add to that one of our pieces, and just make a little mark. Need to do the same at the other end. Like so. Put all those bits back together. Square up. It's a lot of squaring up, just keeps everything nice and accurate. And speeds up the marking out because we're doing it four at a time. So I line up with the knife line and again at this end. Now we can put the perpendicular lines down for the joint and only need to go about halfway. So I line up with those saw lines
and you've got four of these perpendicular lines to do for each joint on each piece. So that's eight on each piece, four eighths, 32. So I've marked perpendicular lines down from the, the top markings roughly to halfway through the, the width of the boards. Now I just need to mark where the bottom of the cuts are going to be. And because they're halving joints, we're designing them to be halfway through that width. We use my marking gauge and set them up roughly for halfway. So what I'm doing is setting my gauge to what I eyeball as about halfway. I make one mark coming from one side, flip the work around, make a second mark, and then they're not quite touching. So then I readjust my gauge so it lines directly between those two marks, and that's halfway. And I double check then by working again from one side, then from the other, and they should fall into the same place. The accuracy of setting the gauge isn't too important because we're always gonna mark from the same side that the, um, these pieces are gonna be lined up with when they're put together. So I think you can see that half of these waste pieces need to be pointing down so that the pieces will go together correctly like that. So if we use the marking gauge from these same sides then that um, halfway line or roughly halfway line is always going to be at the same uh, reference distance from the edges and so when the joints go together they should all come together flush. So let's mark the bottom of those just between the perpendicular lines. Now to remove the waste, we can once again gang these up and saw them together. So I'll just make a starting notch on the inside of the joint against the knife line. Now to remove the waste, it's just a case of using a chisel, just narrower than the joint we're making, just to pare away the waste. Roughly 40 degrees, just push, you see how easy it is, breaks quite easy. Gradually take smaller and smaller cuts till you get down to your gauge line. Just drop the chisel in the gauge line. Make a final cut. And finish down to the gauge line on the other side. And it should be fairly clear We've got a raised section there, triangular section, raised in the middle, and we just lower that away from the top, pairing straight across until we get back down to a flat surface. And we simply have uh, seven more of those to do. So with all the uh, notches taken out, we just have to work out where to put a groove for the mirror. So I want to leave somewhere about at least an eighth, I think. The back, then the thickness of the mirror. 
So we're looking for a groove roughly like that. Now, of course, it only needs to extend as far as the joint. So we'll try and stop it before we come outside of what's going to be the joint area and replicate that on all the others. And we worked out it should be about a millimetre deep. So we'll try and keep things simple and keep the tools down to a minimum. I'm going to use the marking gauge to cut the sides of that channel. So I'll set my marking gauge first to one of those lines. Engage that from within the joint at one side. Into the joint at the other end. I'm giving that quite a deep score. And I'll do the same on all the others, remembering to do it from the far side. A cutting gauge would be ideal for this. If you've just got a marking gauge, that should work because we're not going very deep. Back to the original, reset the gauge, give me enough room for the mirror glass to go in. And again, gauge round all four pieces. Now if you only have one chisel, then it'll probably take you a while, but you can just chisel towards that, or towards both of those gauge lines. And then do a diagonal and you should better start removing little sections from that channel. That's going to take you a long time but if you've got a thinner chisel then it's basically like cutting a long mortise and you see how quickly that millimetre of waste will come out. Now using a chisel is never going to be the, the easiest method and if you've got a small router plane then that might be your next choice. Now although these grooves allow enough space for the mirror to go in, they don't allow for the frame to be assembled. So what we need to do on the two that slot in from the front, these two here, we need to remove this back section from the groove to the same depth. Now it'll just allow it to go past the mirror as the frame is assembled. So we turn these two opposing grooves into rebates. Now I'll just try and clean that up nicely so it'll pass the mirror without snagging. A quick dry fit just to make sure that all works. So that now fits well, captures the mirror so it can't fall out. Just to tidy this up, we'll take some of the sharp edges off. We don't want to do that around the joint because otherwise we'll end up with gaps, but we can shout for the areas away from the joint just slightly, so mark them in whilst the frames together, that will avoid us making any mistakes. Obviously these ones can be chamfered with a plane right across, and we'll chamfer all the ends. Where the chamfers have to be stopped, so on this piece here, 
we can just start it with a chisel and then using the long bevel of the chisel and paying particular attention to the grain direction we can continue that chamfer towards the other end and then start again at the line of the joint cut it in and join them up and at the ends again cut in just past the joint you can cut all these chamfers in even the full length ones with a chisel or you can sand them and you can put the bevels on the end as well with a chisel so the minimum tools I think you get away with making this would be a bench hook a tenon saw or dovetail saw steel rule marking gauge pencil marking knife chisel and a tri-square it's had a coat of shellac now I think an application of wax and that'll be finished or you could colour it Thanks for watching and thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. If you liked it, please share it. And if you want more information on becoming a patron or supporting in other ways, then please click on the links. Cheerio.